Ray, how you doing? I've got a sneaking suspicion we've got both the young and the young at heart here tonight. Okay, do we have any young pe- do we have any young people here tonight? Oh, do we have any young at heart people here tonight? Who who cheered for both? Come on now, who was it? Yeah, all right, all right. Man, I am so expecting. I don't know about you, but you have to have a certain faith level if you come out to a meeting on a Friday night. Hey. I, I, I reckon. So, so this isn't a case of the frozen chosen here tonight. Yeah. This is the select of the elect. So what we're going to do is, um, I, don't know what, I don't know where you're from. I don't know what rules or what barriers or what boundaries or anything like that you have, unspoken rules. But we've got this area down here. All right. And I quite like this area down here. Of The carpet tastes nice. It's quite soft. It's all of that. But um, actually, one of the things that I had in my heart is that I want to position myself tonight in such a way that the first night would be like the last night. Have you, have, you ever, have you ever noticed that a lot of people don't really let go till the last night of a camp or a conference or a, or, or, or a series of meetings? I don't know about you. But I'm going to choose to put myself in a position where my imagination and my expectation can rise. So we're going to worship. We're going to praise. But this area down here is open. You are welcome to come down. You can come down. But I don't know about you, but I'm going to start the weekend with my best foot forward. Because I want... (laughs) I want the first night to be like the last night. Because the coolest thing is, is that the ceiling of tonight is going to be the floor of tomorrow. Hey, do you you agree with me tonight, people? All right, so let's stand to our feet. Who's expecting tonight? Who's ready to get on down? Thank you for that overwhelming response. (laughs) Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living my faith. Nothing is impossible. Sing, I'm not gonna live. I'm not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Come sing it out Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you my eyes are open Strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna live. I'm not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel but Deep down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you 
we try to wait your life Desperately seek to know you more and more Further we look beyond ourselves To your love, to your love Cause we love our name Take the scene after all that you are We are our name You are, we are running Cause all that you are Is all that we want We're running Chasing after all that you are We are running Cause all that you are Is all that we want now Cause all you are is all that we want now. Go sing it out if that's what we believe tonight. Cause all that you are is all that we want now. Cause all that you are is all that we want now.
Come on, lift up your voice to him now. If you're speaking a heavenly language tonight, lift that up. If you don't, pray however you want. <laughs> Jesus, we love you. to everything you have for us tonight. Lord, I thank you so much that you're as close to us as the air that we breathe. <laughs> you so loved us. You so loved us. You so loved us. <laughs> that you suffered the cross for us. Hallelujah, you've won the victory. You've won the victory. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that the price has been paid for our freedom, for our victory, so that we can connect with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done for us. <laughs> Just close your eyes and open your heart tonight. See, if you've come here tonight to find Jesus, you'll find him. You'll find him. It's really personal, doesn't it? <laughs> what victory has He won in your life? What victory do you need in your life tonight? You can claim it and cry out for it tonight in Jesus' name, and it will be done. <laughs> what victory do you need tonight? What do you need release from?
So we've called this weekend Encounter Weekend. So a time set aside for encounter. So if you've come here tonight to encounter a God who loves you so, so much, (laughs) who is powerful, who is loving, who will change your life, then you're in the right place tonight. (laughs) We've got the awesome privilege of having Pastor Clark Taylor tonight all the way from Worship Centre Brisbane, so give him a huge hand. So he's going to come up and he's he's going to speak to us in just a wee bit. Now, if you've never heard Pastor Clark before, I've got to tell you, (laughs) you're in for a treat. I firmly and fully believe that it will change your life tonight because he carries something of the kingdom of God (laughs) and just pours it out wherever he goes. And it's an amazing thing. So we've got meetings happening like all all weekends. Okay, so I'll do I'll do notices, I guess. Or prophesy one or the other. Okay. So we've got meetings tonight, tomorrow at seven, and then Sunday morning, Sunday night. Now that you're welcome to come to those. We'll get all that stuff out of the way, hey? But hey, we've set aside this time because we firmly believe that this is gonna be a time of encounter. This is going to be a time of encountering the presence of God in a way that we've never encountered before. We're going to, we're going to see dreams, schemes, calls called out of people. I believe that there'll be a commissioning this weekend. I believe that, I believe that there'll be a stepping out. I believe that there'll be a breaking off. <laughs> the picture that I see, it was funny. Um, I said before the frozen chosen, I honestly believe, this is the picture that I have, is that there's people here tonight that want to run, that want to dance, that want to go places I've never been before. And I see, um, you know you know when there's a block of ice and it half melts? You see it in the movies all the time. It's like the cartoon thing going on. You know, like um, Wile E. Coyote accidentally gets in the, the, the freeze ray machine and he's sort of suddenly stuck there. I believe that there's people here tonight that have wanted to dance, wanted to run, wanted to sing, wanted to do all of that stuff, but you feel frozen in the same spot. I believe God would tell you tonight that that season is over. That season is over. It's time to move again. For some of you guys, you might feel frozen on your seat. I come to tell you tonight that that season is over. I believe that this weekend is going to be a weekend of commissioning. I believe that this weekend is going to be a weekend of sending out. I believe that this weekend is a weekend (laughs) that you're going to come in at the start of the meeting one way and you're going to leave a completely different way. Is that good? I reckon that's pretty good. So God, we choose that. We say yes and amen to that, Lord. We thank you for you and we step into that. We position ourselves. We open our hearts. We open our minds. We open our imaginations, take us wherever you want us to go. Fill us with your spirit even now. Speak to us, Lord. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is, we'll just do what God tells me to do, and that's, that's cool. We're going to worship for a bit. They're going to invite Pastor in up. He's going to introduce Pastor Clark to you. But we're going to worship. So what I want you to do is I want you to stand to your feet. If you want to, you can lift your hands. At the very least, lift your hands on the inside. (laughs) Dance on the inside. Sit on the inside. I can tell you for a fact it's funner to dance on the outside. It just is. It just is. I grew up Presbyterian. I know the difference. All right? So guys, let's step into this atmosphere of worship. If you want to change tonight, you can. You can, because no one survives an encounter with the living God. You come in one way and you go out another. So let's worship tonight. Call me out upon the waters, the great unknown. 
right around the auditorium right now. Come on, just lift your hands. The presence of God is here. You come hungry on a Friday night, but it's not a Sunday morning crowd. Come on, just lift your hands. I want you to just begin. Ray gave us a great encouragement before. Come on, just begin to talk to the Father. Just lift your voice. Maybe you speak in other tongues. Why don't you just lift your voice? Maybe you haven't done it for a while. Come on, exercise the gift. The power of God is tangible in this room tonight. Only this in the land is shamas. 
your presence Lord we love your presence you know one of the things I'll never tire of is the presence of God and Clark and Anne came around last night and we had a meal together at my home and Dale and and, um, and uh, we just uh, uh, sorry at um, uh, the, today and, and uh, we were talking about some of the great things that God's doing and uh, then they went left and we took them back to the hotel and we came back home and there was just a glory <laughs> it's just a glory people carry the glory of God person next to you carries the glory of God the Bible says this we have this treasure within an earthen vessel God chose to put his kingdom in human flesh that's a mystery it's a mystery to me I can tell you Clark it's a mystery it really is I've met some funny, you know, the original language means that clay jar is a cracked pot. Who's sitting beside a, uh, maybe we shouldn't call it that, should we? The glory of God's there. I want you just to grab that person. Maybe you're sitting beside someone tonight. Come on, I want you to bless them. Come on, and welcome them and make them feel at home. You may not have even met them before, but uh, it's a great opportunity to do that. Encourage them. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we're in here for an encounter weekend, yes? Yeah. Who's up for that? Encounter means a collision, a supernatural collision. That's what it's all about. And um, we're going to meet tonight. Tomorrow night we're going to meet and it's just going to build on tonight. I love what Pastor Ray said. This is going to build on that. By Sunday morning, we'll have the Sunday morning crowd in and we'll have to warm them up a bit. But, you know, it'll be good. <laughs> I'll tell you what, on Sunday night, you don't want to miss that. Six o'clock here on a Sunday night. The place is going to be electric. I, I think my hair is going to grow some. God's going to raise the dead. Hey, that'd be awesome. Hey, yeah, that's right. Maybe I'm Pastor Steve over here too. I think he's going to have a work on him. Amen. Well, you know, it's just been a few years ago now that I met Pastor Clark and Anne, and and uh, I think it's about oh, probably about ten years ago now. And those have been a great ten years for me. I, he's invested in in my life and mentored me and. And I've just had a great privilege. And I'm one of those guys, and he said it this afternoon, he was hanging around this great man of God, and he thought, oh, he wouldn't want to talk to me. And you know what? I had that on me as well. I, I thought, oh, he wouldn't want to have anything to do with me. And I remember getting an email from his, his daughter, Robin, and say, well, mum and dad are away in Fiji doing a crusade, and they'll contact you when they get back. And I went, no, they won't. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? But three days later, he did, contacted me. And, and uh, just in a few, really just in a few weeks, Dale and I were in Brisbane, and uh, we made a great connection, and so it's really, it's been a great friendship, and, and uh, Clark spoke at our conference earlier this year, and is coming back to Queenstown, where pastors and leaders from all different denominations, which really is my heart, came, and uh, he just ministered in the power of God, which I love, and uh, so I want you to give a great welcome tonight uh, to Pastor Clark Taylor, he's been doing this for a long, long time, are you going to speak from down here tonight? Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Well, it's great. Great to be in a youth meeting. Oh, thank you. As you can see, I'm just a couple of years older than some of you youth. I went prematurely gray. But if you believe that, you can believe anything. But I heard that the definition of old age was when you got into a rocking chair and you wondered how to make it go. And by that definition, I'm still young. <clears throat> so it is good to be here. I believe that tonight, 
God's going to move and set a lot of people free. He's going to take deep hurts out of people. Deep things. Things that are on the sub-level. Things that change our life and make us do stuff that we don't really want to do. Make us be nervous and inferior and insecure and angry and all that stuff get depressed. Stuff that's hidden way down deep. I believe God's going to help people with that. I'd like to say how much I appreciate Pastor Ian and Pastor Dale. They're just two of the best people that I know. And I love you both very much. To all the pastors and leaders of the church, to young people, it's just a sheer privilege to be asked to come over here and share this weekend. Well, I want to just uh, talk to you from my heart tonight. We have a young person in our church, a young man. He's only a boy when he first came to church and he's, he's about 15 now. And he was at a home one night and there was a family party on. They, most of them weren't saved. His mother had just got saved and he just got saved. He was 14 at the time, about a year ago, a bit over a year ago. And this young boy and his mum and one or two of his siblings came and gave their lives to Christ. She'd had no church background at all. And, and anyhow, we were just uh, mentoring them. And, and they were poor, from a poorer economic background, nice people. And after the party was over, this boy's uncle had a row with his father. They were brothers. And this, this guy went home and got a knife and he came back and he repeatedly stabbed this boy's father and killed him. And Jacob watched it. He was in another room and he watched his father stab to death and then die. And he was traumatized. But he's got no dad. He's 15 now. There's just been a big court case and he had to go to court and, and go through all the gruesome details and give evidence, which I thought was very cruel. And I said, why couldn't I let him give video evidence? Why does he have to go through all that? But he had to. I feel so sorry for Jacob. He's got no dad to show him how to tie a knot, how to catch a fish, how to be a man. Just how do you be a man? How do you be a big man, a true man? It was very, very sad. Jacob's a fine young man. Just now he's struggling a little bit in himself. And I just buy a little farmlet out from Brisbane a bit. We're going to retire someday. And uh, I've asked Jacob, would he come out and spend a night with us? And I can never be his dad. I don't ever want to take his dad's place in his heart. But I can be a man that can teach him how to do man sort of things. and Bring his mate out with him. But I'm sure I wouldn't be good company all the time for a 15-year-old. But he can bring a mate out. But boys and young men need dads. We need granddads. We need role models. All of us. They tell us, psychiatrists, that a father gives identity to the children. To the, both the boy and to the girl. And when a father's taken away, something's missing. Something irreplaceable is missing. And it leaves a hole on the inside that we can fill with all sorts of stuff. Some do it with alcohol or drugs or anger or resentment or bitterness. And you don't even know why am I doing all this stuff, you know. Why am I like this? And it's often because in Australia at any rate, it's a fatherless generation. And even dads that are there are so busy these days. But how do you find time for work and 
all the stuff and family and everything else. Anyhow, there's no excuses, but, but it is getting more pressured, our society. And it's like a fatherless generation. I've been a pastor for 50 years. I'm not pastoring a church now. I've handed over to a younger man. But I had a young man in my office one time and when I was still pastoring, not that many years ago, about four years ago. He was a good-looking young man. He was in his 20s, strong, muscular, fine-looking stamp of a fellow. Anybody would be proud to have him as their son by the look of him. He looked like he had it all together on the outside. And I'd seen him in the church. But inwardly he was a broken young man. His dad had left home and left his mum and him and the kids. And, and they, when we talked together, he said that I'm broken on the inside. I don't know how to live my life. And the pain in him was so horrific that he sobbed with some of the deepest man gut-wrenching sobs I've ever heard. Just the inward pain. And when I said, why does it hurt so bad? He said, obviously, my dad didn't even want me. And that's what hurt him so very much. My dad didn't even want me. He said, he never rings up on my birthday. He never gives me any money so I can go out and have fun. He said, I can earn my own money now. But for years, I couldn't. I had nothing. He said, I just wanted dad. He said, I just still want dad. He wants dad. Now, you young people are the next generation. And you're going to be the mums and dads. And you're going to have to role model fathers and mothers to your sons and daughters. You might think, Clark, I, well, someday you give enough years go by and you'll most likely have sons and daughters. And how will you be a father to them? How will you be a father to your boys? It's one thing to have a child. It's another thing to be a father. Now, have you ever really thought about how you're going to bring your boy up? And what sort of role model you're going to be for him? If he follows you, will he go to the pub or go to church? If he really follows you, will he love God? Or will he find just like an artificial sort of faith? If he really follows you, if there's enough passion in your heart to transfer your love for God to him or not, where will your boy end up? Where will your girl end up? If you're a real role model for your son, your daughters will most likely marry a man like you. Most likely. What sort of man will you be? If they're going to marry a man like you. I grew up in the Northern Territory. I was turned 14 on my way up there. Left school for the last time. Thank God I was happy. Never liked school. It never liked me. Never went much up to 14 either. I was always out with Dad. Chasing cattle and doing stuff. And so I missed so much school. I lost how to do the tables and then... Then I couldn't cope with it, so I just mucked up, you know. I'm sure the teachers were glad when I left, and I was glad when I left, so I was sort of happy all round. And we went up to the Northern Territory, and we had 1,500 square miles of country, 3,000 square kilometers, a huge amount of country, thousands of wild cattle in it. Never been mustered for eight years. The bloke that owned it before died, and it was all tied up in the courts. And Then Dad bought it. So there was no beast that had ever been handled eight years and under, and so they were just wild. Stockyards mainly burnt, and it was just like starting again. There was thousands of cattle through there. And at 14, I started in stock camps, that's chasing wild cattle. 
Uh, anybody here 14? Nobody. Anybody here? There's one over there? Well, at your age I was. I started. We used to throw them, you know, wild cattle. Oh, wild, wild like hawks. They'd never been, most likely no human being had ever seen them before because there's hardly any people in that country. Like about 35 miles one way was our closest neighbour. 70 miles another way was our next neighbour. Then you never, never saw them really. So except on mustering stock camps once a year, you must be a boundary and see them then. And when you bust in wild cattle, you drive what we call coaches, about 500 head that you're taught to stop and start and turn and sort of be reasonably what we call quiet. They'd be called wild anywhere else, but we call them quiet. And you'd, we'd, uh, we had the runners, and I was always out with them, and there was about four or five of us, and we'd see a wild mob of cattle, about 40, 50 head, and as soon as they saw you, they'd go to a flat gallop in a second. And we'd get up and ride the wing of these cattle, and one behind the other to make like a fence, you know. They'd never seen it before, and we'd wheel them and take them into the mob. And if one broke out, which they were always, heaps of them broke out, and just took off, then one man would go with them, and you'd gallop until you could re get right beside them, and you'd jump off your horse at a gallop and grab their tail. And the theory was that they'd turn around to try and kill you, get rid of you. But at a certain point, you could pull on that tail and you could throw an 800-pound beast. And at 14, I was doing that. At 16, I was running those stock camps. So, so I grew up up there. And I was really fortunate because I had a dad. And my dad gave me self-worth. He taught me how to work hard. He sure did that. He was a hard-working man. And he taught me how to work hard. He taught me how to chop a tree, uh, let your hands slide down the axe handle and drive that axe in at the same spot every time, how to dig a post hole. My first post hole was like a rabbit warren. It went in, but Dad taught me how to dig that thing straight. So Dad taught me to do man sort of stuff. I could make a bridle, count a saddle, a saddle, and all this sort of stuff, make green-eyed ropes, tan, tan leather, because there was no shop to go and buy anything. You know, everything you did yourself out in that country. So I grew up like that, but my dad trained me. Then at 16, dad was yard building and I ran the stock camps. And I'd only see dad once every three weeks or so. Got killed in a tractor accident when I was 19. I really missed him. I used to often say to myself, there's so much dad you never taught me. Because he kept all the books and he had two properties, big property and another smaller property in south. Dads are important. Mothers are too important too. Mothers are incredible. I'm going to talk mainly about fathers tonight. Not because I'm ignoring you young ladies. Because a father's important to you too. Well, this young man was just broken. Hard, really. There's 50% of marriages end in divorce in Australia. That's one in two. That's thousands of young people who go through what this young bloke was going through. And I was fortunate that I could introduce him to the presence of Jesus Christ in my office that day. And in some amazing way that only God does, God got into his heart and filled him on the deepest inside of him where your spirit is. The deepest, deepest inside of you, God filled him with his love. Now, he never got his dad back, but he was okay. He was in my church for years, and then he went off to work somewhere else. He was okay. In fact, he became one of the leaders amongst the young people in the church. He, he just became whole. Tonight, God's going to help people. I know that there's a lot of pain because I was up on the north coast, on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland some months ago, six months ago. I was asked to go up to speak to about 70 or 80 young people. They had this weekend. And uh, I, I shared with them for a while. And then started to move in a word of knowledge and 
the Holy Spirit was telling me things about them and for about an hour or so. I said that one of the things I remember, I don't remember most things, but one of the things was there's a young lady here, you're 16 years old, but you know you can't give up alcohol. You know you have to drink. Who are you? And this young lady, 16, just a young girl, she came out and and the deliverance was incredible. But it was behind that. As God started to reveal what caused this terrible thing that she tried to fill with alcohol. It was a dad who had abused her. And she was worthless in herself. So she just got drunk. And then she couldn't stop getting. How sad is that? That's not just in Australia, that's all over the world. In every nation, it's, it's so sad. Just so sad. I went to a little town called Yapoon, halfway up the Queensland coast. Just a small church, about 30 people in the church. And Anne and I were there for three nights, I think. And the very first meeting, there was only about 30 folks there. Before I started to preach, God said to me, there's a man here and he's grown now, but when he was a young, young man, I forget the age, 15, 16, something like that, his dad tied him up to a post and flogged him with a stock whip. And now he's grown and the rage and the anger inside him has lived there all these years and now he's abusing his own family. And this man came out and, and he fell on the floor, just broken. The emotion of it all just overwhelmed him. And the power of God came on him and we broke that spiritual force off him. And, and God changed him from the inside. Only God can do stuff like that. Only God. It's only God can make a man a man or make a woman a woman. Only God. Only God can stop us being a big head or, or stupid and stuff like that and make us whole. Only God can do it. God is a really nice person. God's a really kind person. God really does love people. And God's going to move and set a lot of people free here tonight. You listen to what Jesus said when he started his ministry. Sort of like he was introducing himself to the world, to all the people. He's Luke 4.18, he said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That doesn't just mean the people with no money. Poor in spirit. People who are broken. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And I've seen, and so have you in this church, I'm sure, seen God heal so many brokenhearted people. People that are broken on the inside. Like this family. If you met the family now, Jacob's mum, she's whole. More whole than she was when she first came to that church and still had a husband. She's just a part of the church. She's just a wonderful and a lovely lady. And uh, Jacob is a fine young man and the rest of the siblings. What a great thing God does. He came to heal our broken heart. And those of us that have had good upbringings can still get a broken heart. Uh, it'd be surprising if somebody in this room, if most of us in this room, hadn't had a heart broken at some stage or other. You just live long enough and something's going to happen that'll really hurt you bad. Jesus came to heal our broken hearts, to bring liberty to the captives. And we're bound by all sorts of stuff, eh? Like I was bound by anger. I grew up angry when I was just in the bush. And mainly because I was 16 and I was tall and skinny. And I had to work men who were 40. And they were tough men. And we'd, we'd work 10, 12 hours a day. It was seven days a week for three weeks. And then we'd go home and have three days off and start getting the next mob of horses ready and we'd go out again. And at the end of three weeks, seven days a week, 
men get a bit antsy, you know. And uh, you had to get them up a bed, out of bed before daylight. And I was only 16. There were some nights I always carried a 45 revolver to shoot scrub bulls with and whatever. Some nights I slept with that thing because I was scared what might happen. Uh, one night the mosquitoes were real bad out there. One night I left a lump in my bed because I heard some men saying oh, they'd drive a spear through me and whatever. And I sat out with the mosquitoes all night long with a revolver in my hand to shoot the first fella that had ever come near me. All sorts of stuff happens while we grow up. And God comes to heal our broken heart. I used to be reasonably angry and a bit violent because I found I had to be to work those men, in my opinion. I didn't know Jesus. To me, he was irrelevant anyhow. I always believed there had to be a God, but he wasn't relevant to me because I wanted to be tough and hard. And so I'd become that. Then I became a Christian. And I found that the person I'd become wasn't much use as a Christian. But Jesus took that hardness out of me. And he gave me a soft heart, a gentle heart, a loving heart. He did that for you too. He did that for you. I had an image of what I thought was a man. He was hard drinking, fighting, that sort of stuff. But that's not a man at all. <laughs> if you would bear with me, that's an idiot. That's not a man. A man is somebody who will say, I love God. A man is somebody who's whole, who can love and be loved. A man who's got life together. And God's got to be in the center to have life together. He really does. He really does. So fathers, or would-be fathers someday, even if you're not thinking about it right now, that someday, when that time go by, and you'll find a, a girl that you just would do anything for, and someday or other, you'll have a baby. And you girls the same. What sort of father will you be? If you live a wild youth, will you ever change? What sort of father would you be then? Anyhow, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. I was captive to anger and violence and heaps of other stuff. But he set me free. It wasn't just easy. But he set me free. Little by little, he softened my heart. I shoved a gun on a bloke's back once and told him unless he got off that property, I was going to blow him to bits. And I think I would have. And when I walked away, I was pleased that I had no troubles with it. I thought I'd arrived. Actually, I'd arrived, but at the wrong destination. And Jesus came into my heart at a Billy Graham crusade. My God, it made a big difference. It made such a difference. I went home. I was batching. I'd come out of the territory, running the other property Dad had. Dad was killed and brother-in-law came and took that one. I went down south anyhow. And the cousin asked me to go down to Billy Graham crusade and I went with him. Had no intention of getting saved. But I met Christ that night. I went home. I got to go up for the cows 3.30 in the morning and I was batching and milking about 98 and all the rest of it. Working hard. I wanted to sing. I usually wanted to swear. But I wanted to sing. I only knew two lines of a hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. And I was singing these two lines, getting the cows in it. 3.30 in the morning. Singing them with all my heart. And I was happy. 
And I thought to myself, I don't remember ever being happy like this before. Not ever in my whole life. And I was happy. That only lasted till a cow stood on my foot and I lost it. And... But I gradually learnt how to walk with God. Gradually I learnt. I couldn't really read or write when I got saved. I had hardly any schooling. And I struggled away to pronounce a word syllable by syllable. I've had an education since then. But listen, he makes a huge difference. It's not just a heap of theology or a heap of Bible verses, though I love Bible verses. I memorized every one that Billy Graham sent me while I minded the cows on the loosen of a morning. I memorized all these verses. And they did me so much good. So you need the Bible. But it's your relationship with God himself. And I believe you've got to belong to church. You've got to belong to other Christians. You've got to do it. And there you grow. To say God loves you is one thing. To actually be loved by God is a wonderful experience. We're talking about somebody up there was talking about God our Father. I don't know who it was on the platform. And I know in my heart I said, God, I just thank you that I can call you my Father. My Father. Have you ever really from your spirit called God your father? Have you ever let him father you, teach you, train you? Have you ever set out to understand and hear his voice so that you can be prompted and led by him and moved by him? Anne and I, when we... I came, I was in America for five years and I came back and the first church in Brisbane that asked me to come and speak there was on a Wednesday night. And uh, I went to that church and I was saying, Lord, is there anything you'd like me to say like in the spirit before I preach? And, and the Lord said, there's a man here and he was shot in the head and the bullets lodged too close to the brain, they can't remove it. And I'd like you to pray for him. I looked at the crowd and I thought, that is extremely unlikely. <laughs> but I said this, this uh, word of knowledge, as I believe God said. And this bloke put his hand up. And he looked a bit of a rough customer and he said, that's me. He said, they can't get it out. and they, They're afraid that it'll, the lead will poison my brain because it's lodged right next to my brain. They can't operate. Now, isn't God wonderful? God cared about that bloke. He looked like rough like anything. I wouldn't have been surprised he'd been in a couple of gun battles in his time by the look of him. But God cared about that fella. He wanted to touch that fella. That man got flogged as a boy. All those years later, God wanted to touch that fella. And that devil left him with the greatest roaring that I think it was uh, incredible. But it left him. And he became a dad and a husband. God's a wonderful person. Just a wonderful person. Just the nicest person in the whole world. And he truly does love us. If God moves to set you free tonight, you ought to respond really quickly. Because if, if Almighty God says something about you why then he must want to take it out of you and make you different some of the biggest things that we struggle with are normal things like inferiority complexes insecurity fear stuff like that they make us make all sorts of decisions if you've got fear of man in you it determines what you do with yourself how you can present yourself, whether you can just get up and be whole or whether you're always shuffling around, whether you can look somebody in the eye or not. 
it has such a big impact. Just that thing, it is so common, we accept it. But we are Christians or you're likely to become one. If you hang around this place, it's the only thing to do is to accept Christ as your Savior. Like, it is the only thing that makes any sense. Nothing else makes sense. They tell me there's no God. I think to myself, well, I ought to open their eyes and have a look at the universe. Nothing has ever made something. The lesser never makes the greater. You send something alone, it goes downhill. It doesn't go uphill. Uh, everything degenerates left to itself. It takes intelligence to make something. I was reading an account by archaeologists the other day, and they found in some part in America a little uh, triangular stone. And they said that this stone was a man-made stone 16,000 years before, and, but it was man-made because it had intelligent design on it. It was just a little piece of three-cornered stone. They said it was obviously a tool they used. If that little tiny bit of three-cornered stone was proof that an intelligence made it, look at your body. Look at you. Look at the trillions of cells in your brain. There's a million nerves leave your brain and grow towards your eyeball and a million grow from the eyeball to the brain while you're in your mother's womb, while you're hidden. And unless they meet perfectly, you won't see. No intelligence made that. Nothing made that. How can nothing make that? No, you and I aren't a two-celled creature that crawled out of the sea and grew a tail and swung from a tree and then turned into a human being. That's a load of nonsense. Almighty God created us in his own image and after his likeness. We're a God kind of person. You and I aren't destined for a six-foot hole in the ground. That might be where my body will end up. I don't care where it goes. But I am going to be with God. And he'll give me a new body suited to the life of heaven. And I'll meet him face to face. So will everybody on this earth. You'll either meet him as his friend or you'll meet him saying no to Christ. But meet him you will. If you live long enough, you'll grow old. And if you live long enough, <laughs> you'll run out of life and you'll just... Uh, Go to sleep and not wake up, except you wake up in heaven. God's a wonderful person. God's a kind person. God really likes you. God's got the best for you. And if you make him your God, even more than just not nothing just about getting saved, that's a huge deal. But after you're born again, to get to know him, to let him know you, to spend time with him, to fellowship God, to make God your friend, so you can just sit with God and to recognize to become aware of his presence around you and just be with him. That was the first part of ordination that he did in Mark 3.14, that they might be with him. It's, been, it's my greatest ambition is to spend time with him, and I do, a lot of time with him, just to be with him, to be aware of him. Your spirit, your deep inner part of you has a faculty called awareness, and you can become aware of God, just aware of him, just aware. I learned it one day I was driving, I was pastoring a church, it was a couple of thousand strong at the time. We were having a great move of God. And I was really busy. And I thought of mum. My mum was a widow. I thought of mum. And she didn't live that far from me. And I thought, I haven't been to see mum for a while. And when I thought of mum, just thought of her, I felt warm on the inside. And I thought, why did I feel that? I thought, 
I became aware that mum loved me. Because mum did love me. Mum was a professional mum. She was a great mum. She had five kids. She loved us all incredibly. God help anybody who, who messed with us, you know. No, she wasn't a warrior. She was a very, she was a farmer's wife. She was a gentle lady, you know, country lady. But anyhow, but she was protective. Uh, and because I was sort of mum, and mum just loved me anyhow, no matter what I did, I did some stupid stuff. Tried to hide most of it from mum. Because, but she loved me. She would have just cried if she knew some of the things I did. But she just loved me. So I felt warm. And I thought, wow, Jesus loves me. If I become aware of Jesus like I became aware of mum, why, well, I'll feel his presence. So I did. And I have done ever since for the next 30 odd years or something. I've just learned to become aware of the presence of God. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. But I have to become aware that he's there. When I become aware, see, he said, he said to me one day, I said, Lord, why don't you speak to me more often? And he said, I'm speaking all the time. You're just not listening. And so I started to try to tune into his channel, to become aware of his voice. So I'd practice just spiritually, internally, becoming aware of him, just becoming aware of him, just aware of his voice. So, so that I'd practice and I'd practice developing this faculty of my spirit. And so I heard him more and more and more and more. Really, the awareness is one of the greatest faculties in us. Awareness of God. Awareness of life. Awareness just to be. And to be is more important than to do. Just to be. Just to be. When you can just be with God, and you just are there, you don't have to say anything. And whether that lasts for five minutes or an hour or so, you just don't have to say anything. And then you'll just feel like doing a neat lead and guide you. And it's a wonderful experience, but God is a spirit. But he's a wonderful spirit. It's to get to know him as spirit. We just had a conference, our annual conference, and the children have a conference while the adults do, and the youth have theirs while the adults do. So one night, the last night of conference, we brought all the children up. They were, I don't know, six years old to about 12 years old, I suppose, something like that. And they had words of knowledge for the adults. And uh, then the adults came forward, and these little kids prayed for them. And some of the big men and little girls uh, they were reaching up to touch their belly button, you know. And the big men, the, these kids had been praying and praying and praying that God would help them, you know. It was a big deal. It is a big deal. And the power of God flowed through these kids and the men were, poo under the floor. <laughs> these little kids were, they had their eyes shut and they were into it. Oh, it was wonderful. Then the teenagers had their turn. And we just carried on with the meeting. But we want our children to know that they're part of the church. That their moving in the spirit is very, very valuable. The real little ones saw pictures and they'd drawn them. And, and they drew a man and one of them, little girl, she drew a man and he had a red dot on this shoulder, on the left shoulder. And he said, that's where the pain is. And so God showed this in a picture. And sure enough, Addie came and she prayed and, and then the pastors were standing behind her and said, now, check that arm out. And he said, you know, the pain's gone. He was really surprised. Isn't that wonderful? God's really nice, you know. God's really, 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 really nice. And God's, God's more willing to be with us than we realize. And I hope you let him be with you. And if you've got hurt or pain on the inside... He'll just take that away from you. He'll just make you whole. Just let you be free.
Just before we do anything else, I'd like to say this. I'd like to ask any of you that I've never really and truly given your heart to Jesus. And you'd say, Clark, I'd like to do that, that you'd do it tonight. Could we bow our heads in prayer? And if you would say, Clark, I'd like Jesus to come into my life and be my God, like you're talking about, would you slip your hand up? Hold it up till I see it, then you can put it down. I want to pray for you. Would you do that? Would you? Just wait half a minute, that's all. Would you do it? Would you? Would you? Last time I'm asking. Would you? Thank you. You can put it down. Anybody else? Would you? Would you? Anybody else? Last time? Anybody? Thank you. You can put it down. Is there somebody else? Is there? Come on. Come on, friend. Put your hand up. Put it up. Just let me see your hand. Wave it to me if I can't see it. Would you? Would you? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Who joined these four people? Who else will? Would you tonight? This is the most important decision you'll ever make. In a hundred years from now, this will be the only decision that will count. Absolutely. Whether you've made a million dollars or not will matter not a fig. But what you did with Jesus will matter for eternity. Thank you. I see your hand. You can put it down. Anybody else? Would you? Would you tonight? Would you join these people? Five, I think, people. Would you? Would you? You know, it was the last time Billy Graham gave an invitation that I found the courage to get on my feet and head down to the front. The very last time. I almost never made it. Last time I'm asking. The last time. Would you raise your hand if you haven't yet done so? Would you? Would you? Okay, you can look this way. Would those five people... Do something for me, please. Very, very important. We just get to your feet and come on down the front. Stand in a line in front of me. I want to pray for you and lead you to Christ. You come straight away now. Come on. That's right. Just hop up to your feet and come on down. Come on down. Come on. Each one of you. Come on. The whole five of you. Come on down. Come on. Come on. You're Kiwis. You're not shy. Come on down. Come on. Come on, you guys. Come on down. Come on. Good on you, man. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, sir. Proud of you. Come on, the other three of you. Come on down. Come on, man alive. You're Kiwis. Come on down. Come on. You're part of the All Blacks. You beat we Australians all the time. Come on down here. Quick. Come on. Last time. If you stand up, start coming down, close your eyes, no one will see you. Why don't you do it? You know, it's just putting your foot up and putting it down, that first step. And then you just keep on coming. And you make the greatest decision of your entire life. Okay. Pastor Ian, I'd like you to come and stand with me. These two men. We're going to say this prayer. It's going to change your life forever, for eternity. You really mean it from your heart. And the other three of you, please say this prayer and mean it from your heart. You say these words to Jesus Christ. He's standing right in front of you. He was raised from the dead, a life-giving spirit, the Bible says. And the spirit of Jesus is going to come into your life and join himself to your spirit. And he will never leave you. Say this to him. My Lord Jesus Christ, I open my life to you. I ask you to come into my life, to join yourself to my spirit. Please forgive my sin, all of my sin. Take it all away. Words, thoughts and deeds that I've done that are wrong, please forgive me. I give them to you. Thank you for dying on a cross in my place. I receive you as my Savior now. I belong to you, and you belong to me. 
Let me make friendship with you in the days and years to come. Now I'm going to pray the blessing of God over you. Father, I pray for this young man. Let the anointing and the power of God fall on this young man tonight. And let the presence of Jesus settle over his life. Lord, ah, oh, there it comes now, the presence of God. Just settling over you. Coming inside of you. Lord Jesus, touch this young man. Touch this young man tonight. God be to them all you've been to me over the years. And the other three, God, I pray for them. And I pray to give them the courage to talk to somebody tonight and tell them I was one of the three. And make that decision. Oh, brother, do I have a parent? Touching you, the presence. Amen. Is there anything you you do in this church? Or is that, you, you know these people? Okay. Okay, well, who's going to look after that? Okay. Okay. Would you like just to go with her? She'll give you a Bible that you can take home. Just, there you go. You go on down with her and get a Bible and... Um, the other three of you, why don't you get a Bible too? Take it home and read it. You want to start reading in the Gospel of John. And that's a good place to start. I'm going to ask God to tell me things about you. <clears throat> and when he tells me, I'm going to ask the, the person. and You just respond real quick and we'll just see what God does here amongst us tonight. And the first thing is a physical thing. and Somebody's sitting up here in front of me and it's in your stomach and you just have the, a lots and lots of trouble with your stomach. Your system is not right in there. Here's that person, please. Just slip your hand up and God's going to heal you tonight. You're right up here in front of my hand. Who's that person? Thank you. Would you come? And God's going to heal you and set you free tonight. Uh, there's a young person here and, and uh, you're over on this side. And you just are under so much pressure. And you get your neck, your head, you get just pains and aches. And that pressure, there's not really a reason for it that you can see. It just lives over you. Just comes there. Who's this person that God's telling me about? Come on down and God's going to help you tonight. Set you free. He came to set the captives free. To set at liberty those that were bound There's another young person here and the Lord's telling me that things haven't gone right for you. Trouble all around you. And you're, you're considering, you're thinking about self-harm. And Jesus wants to fix some of the things that are going wrong around you so that that pressure to do self-harm goes away from you. Who's this young person? It'll mean so much to you tonight. Slip your hand up. Who's this young person? You're considering it. You're thinking about it. It sort of sticks around in your mind, you know, because the physical pain, thank you, would you come? And God's going to help you tonight. He's going to really, really help you tonight. That's why he came to help people. Just to help us with the stuff that we're going through and to become part of our world so that you just stay there with your mate. That's the way. I'll be there in a moment. And Jesus will just set you free just because he loves you. Just because he's going to take some of that pressure off you. Been there a long time, hasn't it? It's part of your life. Comes from lots of things, hey. But you know, the past only lives with us while we let it live with us. Jesus Christ took our shame and our indignity 
stuff that happened. He took it on the cross and he bore our shame so that we don't have to carry it. He bore the pain. Isaiah 53 says so. He took our pain. Now, your part in this tonight is that you're going to let him have it. You're going to let it go out of your life. You're going to be prepared to let the pain go from this that happened. So, a while ago, a bit a while ago, you're going to let it go. And if you ready to do that? Nod your head or something. You ready to do that? Then it's going to go out of you and it'll take about one second as soon as the moment comes. But that goes of the Holy Spirit. He just comes to set you free. Let it go. Keep letting it go. Keep letting it all go. Let the memories go. Let it all go. Let it go. Give it to Jesus. He's standing right here to take it from you. Why, he wouldn't have told me about you unless he was ready to take it away from you. Give it to him. Give it to him. There it goes. There it's going out of your life. Now I can feel it going. It's just loose. There it goes. And that devil that was pressing it on you, you go from this young woman and never, ever, 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 ever come back in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You let this precious young lady go free. Wow. Anyhow, have a look at me. How do you feel inside at this moment? Warm. That's good, isn't it? Did you feel it leave you? You did. You felt it. Went out the feet. Eh, devils can go out any way they like. Mongrel things they are. <laughs> I lost my language to describe them when I got saved. <laughs> but anyhow, Jesus came to set us free. He set me free too. Mine was violence. He set me free from it. Terrible anger. And he took it away. Isn't that good? And he took your all the pain. Don't take it back again. <laughs> you you can keep free. Jesus loves you. And if ever you tries to come back again, you have any trouble, see Pastor Dale or Pastor Ian here or your youth pastor, Pastor Ray or something. But I don't believe it'll come back. Anyhow, the next one. Yours was your tummy. Oh, God's just going to heal you. But just all over you. There's the healing power of God fell on you then. Supernatural. That's because God's supernatural. And he's just <laughs> destroying that. You spirit of infirmity, look and go from her and never come back. Now, Father, let the gift of healing just be in her body and let her be absolutely free because you're such a wonderful, wonderful Savior. And we honor you, Lord. The self-harm. Who's the self-harm? These, these guys? Oh, Jesus is going to so love you tonight. And he's going to fill your spirit with love. He's just going to do such good things. I always want a man. He's just going to, oh, there it comes now. Oh, such a power blue a shoe off. Wonderful. Anyhow, who cares about it? You know, Jesus is just setting you free at this moment. What a beautiful young woman you are. What a precious young woman you are. And God loves you so much, so much, that he called it out tonight just because he wanted to reach you. You know, it's a big deal, isn't it, that God Almighty just wanted to touch you because he loves you. He didn't want you to do that stuff. But he takes away, you know, the Bible talks about evil spirits. They're very real. And it, that's evil spirits that talk to you about all this stuff, you know. And of course there's a lot of pain. Of course. You never think about doing stuff like that without a lot of inner pain. And now you need to pray. And God's going to take that inner pain out of your heart. Your part of it, you'll let him take it. Let him have it. You let it go out of your life. I'm going to put my hand on your hand if that's okay. Because I want to get it near your spirit, that's all. And the power of God, you just think about Jesus. Don't think about what's happening. You just leave that between God, me, and this thing. There it's going. Now, anyhow, I can feel it losing its power. 
I can just feel this thing. Just, just, yeah. well, anyhow, it's going to go without any nonsense at all, like they should. You can just feel it evaporating. Father, I pray. Everybody, would you pray with me? Fill this young woman with your love. Fill her with your love, Lord. Just love on her. Put your arms around her, Lord Jesus. And let the love of God fill her heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's not necessary to feel anything, but did you feel anything going on on the inside? You did? What did you feel? You don't know? What sort of feeling was it? Like a relief that it's gone. Oh, isn't that good? That's wonderful, isn't it? Well, God really, really, really loves you. You must be one of his favorites, I think. Yeah, you must be. You know he's holding all these people up just while he deals with you. <laughs> isn't that something else? I don't know how many people there are here, but he says, let them wait just while I look after my daughter. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, you want to talk to him lots and make him your best friend. Just talk to him about everything, you know. And if you have trouble learning to hear his voice, talk to Pastor Ray, the youth pastor here, or somebody that will just train you. Now I better put a shoe back on. I'm sorry. What's all right? And were you into that too? You come on out here, mate. God's going to help you. Are you related to cousins? Cousins? Wow. How about that? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Wow. Wow. You have had like a hard time, eh? And I can hear you wishing that it was all different. That you wished that somehow or other it could sort of magically change. So there was happiness. There's most likely not any magic in the world, but God's here. And God's going to come into you. Oh, young man. I feel the power of God. And it's going, oh, it's going to come into you now. And that wonderful power of God that fell on you just then was the mighty Holy Spirit going right into your life to take out the hurt and the pain, the hell that you've had to live through, the pressure on your mind. Young men your age shouldn't have to go through it. But you know, Christ brought peace into the midst of a storm. And the love of God is filling your life tonight. And God just said to me just at this moment, He said, I've put something inside of him that will let him have peace in the midst of trouble. And that'll stay with you all the days of your life. You'll have a calmness in the midst of troubles all of your life. Because God did that for you tonight. That's because he loves you so much. He really, really likes you. And because he likes you like that, he would like to be your friend. Have you ever asked him to be your saviour yet? Good. And because you're one of his, that's why he's helping you tonight. But it certainly will change your life. Now I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a father's blessing over this young man. I bless you. What's your first name? Xavier, I bless you, Xavier, in the name of Jesus Christ. I affirm your manhood. 
I affirm that you're a, a man made in the image of God. I affirm that you have purpose and destiny. I affirm over you and I speak over to you the, a good future, a blessed future, and your intelligence that you'll do well, that the presence of God will go with you all the days of your life. That you'll grow up to be a fine man. Man that's got self-worth and dignity. Well, I believe they're the words Jesus told me to speak over you. And so therefore, those words will go inside of you and have power to help you in your life. But never forget that God loves you. Okay, come on up. What did you feel tonight when that power fell on you? the great pressure was released. Now, isn't Jesus wonderful? That you do that for a young man. Change the course of a whole life. Good on you. What about you? How are you? you come on down here. Why don't you? You don't want to come down? You, you move up. Well, then I'll come up here. How about that? That's a deal, isn't it? Do you have lots of difficulty inside too? You do. Everybody love this young lady, will you? Will you just work with Jesus? Because that changed their entire life. Changed generations to... Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the power of God. It's coming all over you. Now you look to Jesus. Close your eyes, please. Be aware of Jesus. Father, let your power come over her now. Oh, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Don't worry about it. That's a good thing. That's his power. That's his presence of Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. Just fell on you. That's wonderful. That God likes you that much. That God wants to be your friend. And that's a big friend. Like if you were the friend of, friend of the whoever he is, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, that'd be a big deal. But if you're the friend of the God who made heaven and earth, that is big deal. If you're his best mate, then he'll look out for you. So you can talk to him any time at all because you've got access to him. And you never forget tonight, God, you came over me. You put your supernatural power over me and uh, took the pain away from me. How good is God? Come on up here, young fella. What a fine looking man. My goodness me, you're a good-looking man, you are. My Lord, where'd you get those good looks from? Huh? From Mum, eh? Wow, how about that? Is you good, Mum? Hmm. That's the way. That's the way. Well... Do you feel like you're inadequate or something? Is that right or is that wrong? It's right. You feel you can't quite sort of do things right? Is that correct? Now there's sometimes evil spirits come and hang around somebody because they don't want them successful. And I'm going to take this thing and cast it far from you tonight. It's just going to leave you, and it's going to leave you now. It's just going to go away from you and take like a cloud. will just lift off you. I can actually see it. It's like a ring of a cloud around you, and it just was there, looked really strong, and then it flew off into the distance at the speed of light. You're actually a fine young fella. You're actually quite smart. You can do well. And you're going to do well. Because God loves you very, very, very much. God's got great plans for you. He knows that you'll become successful. 
Just be a fine young man. And Father, for the behavioral problems this young man has because of stuff, Lord, I pray that all the stuff will go out of him tonight so that the behavioral situation will change. He won't need to do the other stuff. You have trouble with behavior. You don't? You're a good boy? wonder where I got that from. Not usually wrong. Anyhow. Anyhow, God bless you. A good young fellow. God look after you all the days of your life. God's a man's God. Yeah. Mouses go to the pub. Real men go to church. <laughs> Wonderful. Jesus. Well, God's just such a nice person, isn't he? Such a nice person. There's a young lady here, and uh, your, your friends are going one way in life, and you want to go God's way but there's a terrific draw on you to go their way which young lady is this that I'm talking about please I don't know where you're seated which young lady is this which young lady your friends are going one way and you want to go God's way but it's a terrific draw on you which young lady is this that God's talking about put your hand up half a minute and it'll all be gone this moment will be over but I'd love to pray with you. Who's that la young lady? Who is it? Is it her? Why don't you come down here then? Let me pray for that. Come on down. That's the way. That's the way. That's the way. Now, if God didn't want me to pray for you, he wouldn't have told me that, would he? That's because he wanted me to help you. Well, he wants to help you. Come on, everybody. Believe God for this. Lord, for this young, oh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel the power of God. Just falling on you. And God, I don't know what you're going to do because you're not telling me. But I know you're going to do something. I think you're going to separate her from those people and give her some better friends. Don't hang on to those friends if they start to drift away. Let them go. You might say, but Clark, I wouldn't have any other friends. Yes, God will give you new friends. God will give you new friends. Friends that are going in the right direction. Because you become like the people you hang out with. So just choose your friends very carefully. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Saviour. Wow, God's just a good person, isn't he? God's just a nice person. I'd like to pray for all the young people that would just like a touch from God. You'd say, Clark, I'd just like God to touch my life again. Why don't you jump up, come down, make a line here in the front. For all the young people that would like that, come on down. Come on, young people. If you would just say, God, just touch me again. Come on down. You're young, yeah. Anybody in this place compared to me is young? <laughs> Come on down. Come on, young people. Come on, let God touch you. God didn't do more than that. Come on, just make a line along the front here. That's the way. Line up about on that line there. That's a good spot. Come on down. Is anybody else? Why don't you? Why don't you tonight? Why don't you let the presence of the supernatural power of God just come over you? Come on down. Come on, you young people. That's the way. Why don't you come? Come on. But when you come in your heart, come to Jesus. So that saying, Jesus, touch my life. Put something in me, God. Do something for me. And if you've got a special thing that you want him to do for you, you, you just think of that thing as we come by to pray for you. And we believe God to touch that thing. Just come a bit more forward here on this section. That's the way. 
We want people working with us. Pastor Ian, you're going to come and pray with me. And, uh, Pastor Dale wants to too as well. You just come automatically. Uh, but we're just going to pray. You know, when, when the presence of God comes down, don't fight it. You don't have to help us out. But don't fight the presence. Just let God do what God wants to do. He'll go on the inside of you. You might feel warm. That's a common experience people have. Sometimes people they tell me, I felt like a wind blew around inside of me. All sorts of different things they'll say. And some people feel cool breeze blows over them. It could be anything. And some people feel nothing at all. But they change dramatically. What we want is the Spirit of God to come over you so that the change will be permanent. And that's what you want. So I'd like you to, if you close your eyes, and make your request to God and say, God, this is what I'd like you to do tonight. I'd like you to do this in me. Let it be something that's really worthwhile because it's God we are going to work with or he's going to work with us. And God can just do anything. Anything. Are we going to pray? Oh, Father. Why? Oh, there it comes now. There's a presence. Oh, there it comes now. Oh, there it is now. Oh, there it is now. It's flying over you. Oh, there's the presence. Oh, there's the presence now. And you. And you. And you. Oh, there's the presence of God. Father. Do such a beautiful work deep inside of her soul. Let the desire of her heart be realized. Oh, there comes now the presence of God just for. Just do what God wants to do inside of you what the Spirit of God wants to do. Oh, Father, oh, there's the anointing of God. It's falling on Father, I pray for these young people that we've already prayed for. And I ask God that you do such a deep thing inside their hearts. Such a deep work. Permanent. So that nothing can ever snatch it away. Father, ah, oh, there it comes. Set. Ah, oh, there's the presence. On you, that's, you felt the presence. You just open your heart and just let God do whatever He likes with you. He's a gentleman who never falls in the way. But if you let Him do it, Let your presence, your grace and your goodness just come on. He's going to fill you. Oh, there it is now. The presence of God. Let him give you the desire of your heart. Oh, there it is. Receive from them. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Jesus said that. Mark 11 23. Father, to this young, oh, this young man. And remain with him. Father, for this young lady. Oh, the, I feel the wondrous love of God. Just flowing into you, flowing over you. Lord, let that blessing of God just come over her tonight. 
Father, for the... Oh, here it comes now. There it is. That's the presence of God. Yes, I do. I think you felt that. Just touch you. Just touch you. Let the love of God, let God love on you. Just let him love on you. How do I do that? Why, just to let him do it. Just let him do it. Just let him have his way. Because God loves you. Who else is there? Did I? Come on up, mate. Why don't you lead us in a worship song, Ian? I need some musos, though. I need some musos. There's some musos. I'm just going to worship. worship. Start uh, doing some jamming. Let's just stand for a minute. Let's just worship it. Let your presence fill this place. And when we begin to worship, God just sits down in our worship. He is enthroned in our worship. And these guys are going to lead us because I, I just can't think of a song. <laughs> and so come on, let's just, uh, let's just lift up our voices and begin to sing this and just worship. Because the presence of God's going to build. It's going to be here tonight, tomorrow night, Sunday. In the presence. I just about started singing Roy Fields then. Love 
6.30 tomorrow night there's going to be a prayer meeting just in the upstairs room directly behind you and uh, if you're coming tomorrow night I want you to pray and uh, I, I believe that this weekend it's been in my spirit for a while I believe that there's been a, a move of God that God just wants to release in the hearts of many many people and uh, Pastor Clark carries that and um, you know some remarkable things that he's seen and and, uh, and so tomorrow night, you know, and, and just through the day, start praying. But tomorrow night, 6.30, we'll get a few people up the, up in the hall. It's going to be a bit noisy. So it's one of the, it's not a soft prayer meeting. We're going to start getting into it. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So if you can struggle up the stairs, go up one more flight. All right. And, um, and we'll just be in that area up there. And we'll be someone leading that. And uh, that's going to be a great time. And uh, that's going to be, we're going to take up an offering tomorrow night. And um, we just want to give that directly to Pastor Clark. He's retired, so called retired now. But uh, we want to just um, give him a great gift when he leaves. We're going to do that anyway. But we'd love you to contribute and help in some way. If you're not going to be here tomorrow night and you want to do that now, what we're going to do is we're going to just pass some buckets around right now. And um, so if you were going to McDonald's, just say, I want to sew McDonald's or whatever, you know, like, and make it a Big Mac or something. But, uh, more than that but father tonight we just want to say thank you we thank you for your servant father even now uh, lord as we give we want to say thank you for all that you're doing uh, lord in our lives in jesus name father i want to thank you for everybody here tonight i want to thank you for the young people that are here tonight i want to thank you for, father for, for for the churches that are represented here tonight father we want to thank you for the province of Southland. I believe, Lord, a move of God can come out of the province of Southland and it would shake this nation. And so, Father, that a wave of your Holy Ghost would move up this nation. It would, uh, it would come from the south, go to the north. It would come from the north, go to the south. But, Father, I believe that there is a, a remarkable well to be redug in this city. And, uh, Lord, tonight we just say thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to give it your hands together and really just uh, thank Pastor Clark tonight for coming and for ministering in that way and, and uh, do that. It's great to have you with us. And uh, so we're going to start at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. There's some buckets going right around now. We'll get FPOS downstairs. We take anything in this church. If you've got your firstborn, we'll take them as well. And um, <laughs> we don't take goats or, uh, well, I don't know about that either but where's the bucket yeah there's f boss downstairs take pretty all that kind of stuff but uh have we got a cafe running no we haven't okay that's fine so um if you haven't given your money you can borrow it take someone who looks like they haven't given theirs and uh, make them take you to mcdonald's or something rather that'd be a good idea that'd be a great idea god bless you guys have a great night give the musos a hand too they're a great team they're going to be on over the weekend so it's going to be cool